Okay, so this video is going to be the first in a series of several quick mini video lessons on combining transformations. In this video, I'm going to apply several of the transformations we've been looking at to the graph of the square root of x. So you can see I've plotted my base function here. Remember, you always want to start with your base function, and then you're going to sort of systematically go through and apply your transformations to your graph. And then remember, you always want to start with reflections and stretches and compressions first. Okay, so you can see here I don't have any stretches or compressions. There's no number in front of my function. There's also no number in front of my x. So that tells me right away that I'm not going to be stretching or compressing my function in any way. However, the first that I see reading my, my function from left to right is that I have a negative in front. And remember that tells you that you are going to reflect your graph over the x-axis. So you can kind of picture this graph just being flipped over this x-axis so that it's in the negative quadrant. I have a handy feature on this program. Uh, it's a, sort of like a flip feature that will allow me to do that very quickly. Uh, so you can see that I've flipped my graph over the x-axis compared to where the original graph was. The second thing I want to look at here is this negative 2. I'm subtracting 2 from my x inside my function. Remember that if, I, if I'm subtracting inside my function and there's no coefficient in front, you can assume that you are shifting to the right by however many units it specifies. So this one's telling me to move to the right by two units. So what I can do is take this graph, I can pick it up and I can count one, two units to the right. Okay, I'm kind of off my, my screen a little bit, but I think you get the picture. The last thing tells me that I'm gonna be moving down by four units, that's what this transformation here tells me. So again, you can sort of pick up your function and you can just sort of move it down one, two, three, four units, and that's approximately where your function will end up. Okay, so that gives you a pretty good idea of how to apply those transformations to the square root function. Stay tuned for a series of additional videos on the rest of the basic functions.